Hi guys, Kevin here. So today we're going to review this small bad puppy power right here which is the PNY Accelerate Gaming Orientated NVMe SSD that uses the PCIe Gen 3 X4 interface with the NVMe 1.3 standard. If you purchase this NVMe right now, it comes with a 5 year warranty. Not that bad. Now when it comes to storage capacity, it starts from 250 gigs, 500 gigs, 1 terabyte and 2 terabyte. The standard ones right there. But for today's video, we'll be taking a look at the 500 gig variant right here, which is rated to last up to 800 terabytes written, which is twice more than their competitors. So the rated read speed for this NVMe right here is 3,500 megabytes per second, and the rated write speed for this 500 gig variant right here is 2,000 megabytes per second. And if you want the rated write speed of 3000 megabytes per second you definitely need to jump to the one terabyte or two terabyte capacity storage now i wasn't sure whether this nvme right here will thermal throttle like those in the market heavily or not so i did my test with bare bones alone versus with a heat sink right here this heat sink is actually is nickel type and it's by ek so my test would base on these two setup right here so let's jump into the benchmarks to my surprise, it does not have any much difference whether you go bare bones or with any heat sink on it. As I was worried it would thermal throttle hard within a few seconds just like other NVMEs in the market or the previous NVMEs that I reviewed in the past where it go below 550 megabytes per second. Just by looking at Crystal Disk Mark as well as Auto Disk Mark Benchmark both on the physical setup, they look identical for the synthetic benchmark. So my next step is to see what happened if we did huge amount of file transfer and how fast it thermal throttle in real life scenario or where it hits 550 megabytes per second or below. My first test, I started with a 20 gig folder size with large 4K files. It did not thermal throttle at all. So moving on, what I did next is to use Sony RAW files, almost 70 gigs folder size. And we did see the heat sink set up thermal throttle roughly 1 minute and 26 seconds later. Without the heat sink, it thermal throttle earlier of 1 minute and 11 seconds, a buffer of 15 seconds. For my final test, what I did is I combined both the photo and video folder into one where the total combined folder size is 90 gigs. Now this is a little bit hardcore but with the heat sink set up, it thermal throttle roughly 1 minute and 10 seconds later. And without the heat sink, it starts earlier at 31 seconds. Again, not that bad considering I'm stressing this at the ambient temperature of 30 degrees. Having the heat sink on X as a buffer is not a solution to counter thermal throttling. Again, I was so worried panicked that this will thermal throttle hard to a point that all my NVMe set up for testing in my Thermotec A500 case behind that, I always have one fan blowing towards the NVMe, regardless whether they have heat sink or bare bones. I was so worried, panicked, because I have reviewed NVMe in the past where it thermal throttles so hard that it performs worse than a typical 2.5 inch SSD. They go even lower than 300, 200 megabytes per second write speed. So, I was worried, panicked for it, but to my surprise and my testing, even I just chunk almost a 90 gig file at it, it just performed. And one thing I like about this NVMe right here is they don't thermal throttle hard. And when they thermal throttle, they maintain a speed of roughly 450 to 500 megabytes per second write speed constant, that kind of constant flow. So it does not introduce too much heat to the controller where it thermal throttle below that figure like other NVMEs. It will try to maintain that constant speed at that constant temperature so it can deliver faster file write speed to your drive right here. This NVMe is not built only for gamers but content creators because as content creators, we are constantly writing new files into our drive. Maybe uncompressed raw files from cameras, 4K directly from the camera or if you're recording like 4K ProRes 422 from a Ninja Atmos <laughs> external recorder like how I do. I know that each review project takes roughly 120 gigs to 140 gigs for photos and videos, A row, B row. We need a drive that has higher resistance when it comes to terabyte written. That will show that the drive would last longer. And not only that, we always need to find the drive that has low thermal throttling 
when it comes to constant write speed, especially large folder like I did my test earlier, the 20 gigs, 70 gigs, and 90 gigs. This one right here hits the mark for both that two requirements for content creation. And I highly recommend this because this is beating the Samsung Drive at a fraction of a cost. And that's a good thing for us content creators who wants to have multiple drives like this as motherboards now can support up to three NVMe SSDs. So thank you for watching this video. Comment below what do you think about this baby right here. Leave your feedback of this thing right here in the comments. What other stuff you want me to review next from PNY, just drop in the comments below. I can try to arrange with them. Remember to like and subscribe and help share this video on social media. We need the necessary boost to get up to 100,000 subscribers and we can do more crazy projects like this. Till then, I'll see you guys in the next NVMe review. But the next one would be PC hardware. Bye guys.